In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to take the free stock images that I shared uh, to create a dynamic and reusable scenarios. In the previous tutorial, we looked at how to do that using the slide masters and different layouts. Uh, now what we're going to do is learn how to insert an image and create multiple states. And then you can dynamically change those states. So here's a working example. Uh, we actually have one background image, uh, which you see here. So this is our background image. And as I go through different scenarios, so let's say we have a character, and I go through a scenario, now I'm in a, one room, right? And then I've got my scenario, blah, blah, blah. I, but it's still just that single background image. And then when I go to the next scene, uh, you can see the image changes. And it's all done from a single image with multiple states. So what we can do is build an image. We'll insert the image. And then we'll just create multiple states. And then you could save that as a template. And then you quickly have access to all those images rather than having to dig around for them. So let's go ahead and start from scratch just so you can see how that works. So we have a storyline file right here. Uh, first thing is when you click into the slide, you'll notice the aspect ratio of this slide is 4.3. So if we go to design, we go to story size, uh, you'll see the aspect ratio is 4.3. I gave you images that were 16.9, so we want to make sure they fit. So we're going to go ahead and choose 16.9, hit OK. And then you can see that um, that's there. It's a little bit wider. And now we can start adding the images. So we're going to do this, and it's going to be super simple. So let's go to Insert. We're going to Insert Picture. And we'll just find the scenario pictures. We'll just grab one. Hit OK, open it. So now it's on the file on the slide. And let's go to states here. And you can see there it is. Now we're just going to create a new state. Now this is a matter of preference. Some people would do normal and then they would do you know additional images. I like to name my states and then have control over them. So if I'm going to name them after rooms like conference room, meeting room, and things like that. Um, I don't want one that says normal. So I'll actually duplicate this. So we'll just create a new state. And I'll call this one, even though it's the same as the normal, I'll just call this uh, reception one. And hit add. And that's just because then I have a name for it rather than normal, because I don't really know what normal is, but I know what reception one is. So we're going to do the same thing, just create a new state. Now you do need to know what images you have. I know I have a conference room. So we're just going to do three. So we'll do conference one. I'll hit add and we're going to create one more and we'll say meeting room one and hit add. Now I have my states. What I want to do is come over to reception one and this is fine. This is my reception. Come over to conference. I want to change this. I'm going to select my state. I'm going to come over to the image, right click. I'm going to change picture and then I'm going to find that. So here's a conference room. We'll select that one. So now I have a conference room. And I'm going to go to Meeting Room, right click on the image. We're going to do the same thing. And we're going to do Picture from File. We're going to choose a Meeting Room. I have this one here and we'll insert that. And there you have it. And so then it's just a matter of how do you use these. So we're going to hit Done Editing States. So one thing you could do is you could uh, set an initial state. So you can build this out. You have one image. Within the image, you can have multiple states. You know, you can have 30, 40 states if you want to. It really doesn't matter. I'd probably separate them. So I might create a slide that has meeting room images or states, then create another one that has the reception or computer room. So this way, it's a little bit easier to manage all the states and you kind of are in the same room if you want to do that. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but you have multiple states. And so when you're working with this, one thing you could do is you could just say, okay, in this particular scenario, we're going to be in the meeting room. So I'm going to go to my states. I'm going to set the initial state to meeting room. And I don't have to change it. It's just that the initial state is always just going to be the meeting room. And so the whole scenario is happening in the meeting room. What this does is saves me time because I don't have to dig for all of my uh, office scenarios images. I already have them all embedded in this single file. Uh, the other option you can do is you could uh, dynamically change that. So let's say we're just going to create a new scene and we'll say this is scene one, right? And then we'll duplicate this and we'll, oops, we'll create another one here and we'll call this one scene two. Alright, let's see here. Scene two. And so let's say when I 
we're going to create a button just so we can go from one scene to the next. So we're going to say the initial state here is going to be the reception area, right? And then I'm going to create a button. And when I click on the button, I want to go to scene one, right? And we'll copy this. And we're going to, oops, we're going to come over here. And oops, I didn't copy the right thing. Let me delete that. Let's come back here. Let's copy the button here. Control C. And we're going to go to scene one, control V, and let's just paste this and we'll make this scene two. All right, so uh, when I'm here, I'm going to go to scene one. So I'm going to click on this button. So we're going to add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to show layer. And I'm going to choose my layer scene one when the user clicks. So that's going to take them to scene one. And then we're on scene one. I want to jump to scene two. So let's go ahead and add a trigger on this button. What do I want to do? I'm going to show layer uh, scene two when user clicks on the button. And we'll just make the button a different color just so we can see that. All right, so we're going to go from scene one to scene two, right? And so let's do this. Now I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So one is I can click on the button, and at the same time I could change this image. So we're going to add another trigger on the button. And what do we want to do? We want to change the state of this picture, which is the background picture, to, we'll say, conference room when user clicks the button. So this is going to happen at the same time. So I'm going to jump to the layer and I'm changing the state of the picture. This one we're going to do a little bit different. So this is going to take us to scene two. So we're just going to put a trigger on the layer. So you can see two different ways. What do I want to do? I want to change the state of picture to meeting room when the timeline of this layer starts. Hit OK. So two different ways to trigger it. One is when we click it, we're going to trigger it on the button. Here, we're going to click and jump to the scene. But when we get to the scene, it's going to load up. So let's go ahead and preview this slide. And now we've got uh, two ways to trigger those changes. And so that's what's kind of cool about having this dynamically swapped. So we can click here, and we're in a new scene. And we click here, and we're in a new scene. And it's all one image. So that's what makes this really great. Now what you can do is when you're done building your image out, you know, get rid of all the scene stuff here, I just go to File, Save As, and then click down here. Save as a template file. And then once you save it as a template file, uh, when you go to your slides, you're going to see My Templates. Now I didn't save it, but you'll see something here, whatever you saved it as, and you'll see the slides available to you. And then you can insert them anytime uh, you want to build a scenario. You've got all those files available to you. Hopefully that helps and you're able to do this. I look forward to seeing some of those things in the community.